Salutations, my friends. I'm Comrade Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO Last Days of Europe, in which we're playing as a beautiful Buryatia under Comrade and someone some would call Wholesome Sablin. So, anyways, we've just defeated the tyrant Yagoda, and we have our event, an end to tyrants. On the stage of the Opera House, Sablin sat with the Central Committee, everyone waiting avidly for the latest support from the front line. Finally, the radio operator raised her head. Sablin could read the message in the glimmer of her eyes and began to smile before she'd even spoken. Comrade, she bellowed, the tyrant is ours. Instantly, the crowd erupted into euphoria. Soldiers hugged one another, tears streaming down their faces as reports came in. Yagoda imprisoned, the enemy fleeing west. The NKVD surrendered en masse. Sablin couldn't help a grin. Erkutsk was theirs. Markiv stomped across the stage and thumped a crate of vodka on the table. From my private stash, if I ever had the cause for a celebration, this is it. Snatching a bottle out of the crate, he tossed it to Sablin. Laughing with his comrades, he chugged from the bottle, splashing some on the maps heaped on the table. Comrades, called Sablin. During every eye to him, the revolution is victorious, he cried, waving the bottle like a baton to, to the cacophonous cheering. Tonight, we celebrate my comrades rejoice. Sitting down, Sablin looked around happily. Markiv was joking with his men. Olanovishkaya down glass after glass of vodka, even Braun was smiling for once. Catching Pichudo's eye, Sablin shot her a smile. She grinned back at him, raising her glass in a mock salute. We did it, Valera, she shouted, already slurring. Sablin smirked, she'd always been a lightweight. Taking another pull, Sublin felt lighter than air. They still had a long, long road to go down to end Russia's chaos and bring her people into a new age of greatness. But the revolution could wait until tomorrow. Tonight, they'd paint Vark uh, Varknudinsk red. In their end, tyrants always fall. Always. And let us let time go on and recuperate ourselves. So now, we might have won this first war against a tyrant. But there are many tyrants along the way to reunite a good true of Russia, especially with the focus read. The revolution is victorious. We are victorious and Yagoda sits in our prison, awaiting his fate. We have proven our strength and will on the battlefields of Siberia and now can transform our region into a worker's dream. Let those who doubted our chances of success be crushed by the boot of Leninism. Nevertheless, our territory has been ravaged by war and much of that infrastructure we had was damaged. Our nation must now begin the reconstruction of the land and build a state much like the old Soviet state under Lenin. If we want to unify the motherland and help the struggling Russians being oppressed by dictators and mismanaged by inept democracies, we must create a strong union that can fight for them. It is also necessary that we create a model province to show our enemies we are only the ones who can create a perfect Russia. No one can stop the masses or the messes from achieving their goals in the end. Oh, masses, yeah. We get doubts. So, currently, we are still losing political power and we need to integrate Irkutsk. So, hopefully, we can get some political power very soon because that would be a very, very nice thing to do. But, my friends, we have still won the war, which is a tremendous thing. Right now, though, we could use some howitzers, so artillery, support equipment. Artillery, and support equipment. Oh, so we're making some. That's good. That's good. Early motors will be fine. We've got plenty enough. We've got some anti-tank. We have a couple comments to get to. Um, I know Southland is kind of a meme. He, some call him, like, a kind of a uh, wholesome person, depending on your attitude towards him. I don't know that much about him. I just know about how, what happened to him in real life, especially with the unfortunate event of him being a... Uh, not successful trying to escape here-ish. I think, I believe it's this area that he tried to escape and ultimately was unsuccessful in our timeline. But in this timeline, he can be very successful if we play our cards right. Uh, even though the economy, we can't do very much about it. That's okay for now. Uh, so one of the comments yesterday was, at least from the last video, was for me to play as Germany's Bowman. Apparently, some people said there's not a lot of videos out on Bowman. Um, we'll get there. I, I will definitely play as Bowman eventually. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. I'm going to wait first. Fate of the NKVD. Ooh, justice for the bereaved. A chance at redemption. Hmm. Anyways, we're going to do Stoke the Fires. Let us promote our revolutionary ideals to make a better society. People have become lethargic and fearful because of the brutality and terror tactics of Yagoda. But cruelty is not what socialism should be about. The workers should love their government, not be scared of it. Socialism is not the dread of what punishment is to come, but the anticipation of what reward is to be made. For socialism to work, it is in dire need of the support of the people. This is where Yagoda failed, but we will succeed. To achieve this, we will need some sort of propaganda. We must appear, oh my goodness, uh, as a loving and caring government to the populace. Posters will be around every corner, and the radios will be filled with revolutionary messages. Likewise, we must also give more rights to the laborers in the factories and farms. We will have support in no time, and we get 50 political power, which is exactly what we need, so we can integrate Irkutsk. And also, we have these dreams of freedom, we have socialist economic reforms, uh, but before we get there, let's go ahead and do doubts. Southern would prefer to get married by the sea, but he had to be satisfied with Lake Baikal. Leaving his new wife, Nadeza, asleep in their compartment, he stepped into the corridor of the train carriage that bore him back to Verhnudinsk. 
Outside, the pine trees rushed under the light of the full moon, gazing into the forest for a moment. Soblin opened the door and was instantly assaulted by the freezing wind and the noise of the train's passage. Lighting a cigarette, a rare luxury, he leaned against the wall of the carriage, exhaling, uh, exhaling occasionally out into the night. After a while, the door to the neighboring compartment slid open. Hair tussled. Perchuro stepped into the corridor. Wordlessly, he offered her a cigarette. Waving it off, she said, having trouble sleeping, Valera? Sablon blew a thin stream of smoke out the window. He couldn't meet the eyes of his friend as he said, Ah, Susanna, I should be happy. This is my wedding night. I love her, I do, but I just feel... Nothing. Sablon looked up at Perchuro, tears filling his eyes. I keep thinking, how will it end? How we will face the most overwhelming obstacles, and every day I send men to die bloody and horrible deaths. What gives me the right? Oh, Susanna, I have such... Doubts. The chore laid her hand lightly on Sablin's shoulder. Nothing worth having is without its price, Valera. When you doubt, find your courage and remember that we fight for what is true and right. We believe in you, and so does every man, woman, and child in Russia, who still hopes for the future. Above all else, Valera, remember the revolution and be true to yourself. Wiping his face, Sablin smiled through his tears. Susanna, I think sometimes that you are the strongest of all of us. Looking into each other's eyes, the two old friends smiled at one another as the train carried them into the night. Love has a ring, and ring has no end. Oh, look at that stability! We changed our conscription level to two year draft. And, which really hurts us, it looks like, except to give us more population, which is, I think, okay. I think it's okay. So, though the revolution against a tyrant was successful, the work of the people, and the party, and of Comrade Sublin, is not yet done. Though we are able to form a united front against NKVD, we now must decide what we should do, or what form of freedom we shall bring to the people of Russia. Comrade Sublin's own interpretation of Leninism is seen by many as a more humane option than Bukhadin's reforms, but the effectiveness of the latter cannot be overstated. Whatever the people decide, Comrade Sublin will follow their will. We gotta make sure we do this before the start of the first Reformed Party Congress, which will be unavailable afterwards. Uh, we have very high influence, while the Bukharinist wing is currently very, very high. Well, that's not good. We don't want them to be very high. We want to be very influential while they are very uninfluential. And we really gotta make sure that we have a... Uh, oh, prepare raid against... Um, yes, look how strong they are. I believe we're gonna do that anyways. Uh, Gershap Ocherov. Well, I'm sorry about what I'm about to do to y'all. You got two divisions, no manpower, and one of them is so weak. This is for the good of the revolution, my friend. The good of the revolution. Actually, what are they? They are... Uh, despotism. Okay. Aldan. Oh, he's got his own little uh, summary there. If you want to read that, go right ahead. But, uh... They have Petty Warlord, Five Dump, and no National Focus. Someday. Someday they will. Ah, beautiful. Oh, Makarov. Vasily Makarov. Valery Sablin. I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Susanna Puchero. Oh, she's the head of the government. Oh, that's good. Ministers. Has no other foreign minister. Otto Brown. Oh, there's Brown. Olanovskaya. Olanovskaya. Cool. Stoke the fires. Great idea. So, in our hearts, stability is always good. In our homes. Let's do that so we can get some expertise in society development faster. As our triumph revolution marches on, we cannot ever forgive or forget that the rights of the workers forms the very back bedrock of socialist ideals. But even now, the working class, or the working men and women of Boratia, languish under old laws from pe decades past and are forced to make do with a barely functioning industrial sector. With the comrades in labor crying out for justice, the time has come to rush to their aid. The General Secretary shall work to personally ensure that the rights of the worker and the new union are guaranteed. All these reforms, however, will be for naught if our people cannot find work. To remedy this, we must begin a large-scale overhaul of our dilapidated factories to both provide ample work and opportunities for the people and bring our industry back to life. In the end, all of our efforts will serve as a powerful statement of our new government's goal. The union will Always fight for the working man and woman and child. Wait, do we have? Ooh, that's a good question. Let's see. Child labor. What? Child labor is illegal. What? Hmm. Legal child labor sounds like fun. But you know what? How else are we supposed to pay for uh, their parents' operations? But whatever. Regional integration. Uh, integrate. Yes, we'll lose political power and weekly stability, but we gain a core, so we don't have to waste guns, manpower. Hmm. That is not good, wasting stuff like that. Oh, and we want to scavenge for loot before we lose our political power, too. That was close! That was very close. We must scavenge for loot. We must always scavenge for loot. Go ahead and attack them. Take their loot from them. And 40 days, we lose more stability, but whatever. The tribute paid. Miraculously, Aldenus caved in and paid us a tribute, handing over their desired loot from the state. Bloodshed has been avoided, and our men live to fight another day. It is unlikely that Alden is to surrender to us so easily again. We got political power from them. Threats are sometimes needed to survive in the anarchy of Russia. Be good, beautiful. Now, I'm not sure what to do here. I think, you know, people have different opinions about what is best here. I'm thinking personally. We got all this stuff here, right? I think power tools might be the best. We get more output and better resource efficiency gain and more construction speed. I'm thinking that's pretty good. I mean, obviously, if we do whatever we do, is going to be good for us. 
I'm gonna do equipment though. That would be very good. And time for a sip of coffee. A rare luxury in this part of Russia, or any part of Russia from here, so. I'm slowly losing more political power, but that's okay. And we have no money. And I just want this to get cored. That would be so good. So good. Good. No more red terror. Good stuff. Kind of hot, but good stuff. Um, someone also recommended... Oh, oh, maybe I'll get to that in just a little bit after we do our homes. Workers' councils empower the Sabalanite wing of our party or Bukharanist wing. Now, as much fun as that would be, I want to go down like strict Sabalanist. But let me, let me know in the comments. If I were to go down the Bukharanist wing, would we still get Bukharan? In? Is he still alive in 1962? He might be. I, don't, I, I really don't know that much about this stuff, so... Um, yeah, what are the other paths you can take? If you let me, please let me know in the comments if you know what other paths we could take uh, if we went like straight Bukharanist. I heard you might be able to get like Burgundian system too, but I might, that just might be a joke. But we're gonna go workers councils for this one. One of the many injustices of your goods regime was the creeping insidious influence of totalitarianism. Now that the tyrant has been dealt with, we must take care not to fall victim to the same mistakes. To that end, we will bring the workers' councils of Bratia into the fold and elevate them to a far more meaningful place in our new government. Although Comrade Sablin shall remain as general secretary to help guide the revolution through this turbulent era, we will give those councils even greater freedom so that they may prove or may properly uphold the liberty of the workers. With these reforms, we will have to take in a powerful step towards our ultimate goal of creating a truly free workers' paradise where no voice goes unheard. Very, very good. Now we've got four factories now. Brazil wins the World Cup final. Congratulations to the champions. I didn't even know there's a World Cup going on. It's a little icy down over here, so we can't play too much soccer. Or oh, football. Football. Oops. Oops. My American is showing. Oopsie. Our choices. Valor Sablin worked his fingernails between two sheets of paper, plucking a report from the top of the stack and shifting the one he just looked over to the bottom of the pile. He glanced up at his advisors, who eagerly awaited the general secretary's decision on the echoes mattered. On the echoes. And closed. Shifting his gaze back downward, he began to read the report on the status of the proletariat. A slew of various retellings of industrial accidents, worker complaints, safety hazards, and call for employment laid upon the page. Unemployment was up. Accidents were down in number, but up in severity, and the masses overall seemed to be suffering. Colin sipping his coffee, like me, sat and scrutinized the report for ten minutes while thick, tense silence hung in the air around the ASSR office officials. Lastly, Sablin came to the end of the third page. A tidy little list of two options. One, a simple plan to increase regulation and improve workplace democracy. Another, pushed by Braun, was to work on increasing infrastructure, reasoning that the improvements to society would make their way down to the workers. From a top-down approach, I guess. The General Secretary cut the silence with the concise reports. It is best we focus on infrastructure. Ooh. Or, we must improve the lives of the worker. Lives of the worker is the way to go for now. It must be the way that we must go. Slowly losing manpower. No. And I do want to do this as well. But, um, We got two weeks. Two weeks, my friends. Two weeks. Let's see. We got the dam, like we did earlier. More construction speed. The collapse of the triumvirate. It was only a matter of time. Oh, Italy. Oh, Italy. Let's see. Ah, vacuum tube computing. Very good. For the Forsaken. We're going to lose attack and recovery rate and population factor, but we'll get 5% more organization. That actually lasted quite a while, actually. It's 1962. Let's grab some trans transistor computing. Very nice. And industry. Uh, max factories, factory repair speed, civilian factory construction speed might be good. Let's grab that one next. Very good. Very, very good. And we have auto saving, but the ghost of Bukharin, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. Cool. And then idealistic revolutionaries. We're quite idealistic. Meng Jiang defeated the Mongolian People's Front in the war. People's Revolutionary Council. Meng Jiang, Manchukuo. There's no way for us to get like Vladivostok back, which really sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's, wait. The majority culture of the state is Congo? Huh. A mingling of Korean, Manchu, and Japanese cultures in the southern provinces out of Manchuria. That is interesting. I thought the Congo was like here. Central Africa. Luba, huh? Oh, look how happy is Siegfried. Ah, uh, he's so happy. The hub of Africa. That I gotta play as one of these nations, man, someday. I, I really do. I love the Rex Commissariats because they look so cool. Uh, let's see. Industrial equipment slowly improves. Another civilian factory. Um, I like more stability, but let's go with the rebuild the factories. During the war, many factories were destroyed, leaving many without a place to work. The Soviet Council unanimously called for construction projects to repair the factories and give the laborers stable jobs. Support of the Soviet Councils is integral to Southland's power base, and following the workers' needs very much appeals to Southland's idealization of Marx and Lenin. Uh, I was trying to get to this earlier, but I cut myself off. Um, I, I was trying to say earlier. Oh, it looks like we got a uh, Irkutsk, Irkutsk Kord. Iraq is here. 
Governance, Lebanon, cool. Uh, we don't want to do warlord development, I think. Yeah, this stuff doesn't really help us that much, except for political campaigning, which isn't, which is okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this one, social economic reforms first. We lose political power, but we get Leninist economy stage one, more political power, monthly population, less consumer goods factories, more research speed, all that good stuff. We're gonna go and grab that. And we're gonna grab socialist army reforms one as well, so we get some more recruitable population factor, less supply consumption, better recovery rate, and better defense. Thank you. Uh, but like I was trying to say before, I interrupted myself like 12 times. Uh, someone recommended that I use a TNO soundtrack because of the super events that occur, like, as kind of like a rite of passage. There goes War in the Desert, another Imperialist War. Um, I'm not gonna, I can't, I don't want to put that submod on for the soundtrack, just because if I, I keep my Steam account in offline mode, and if I were to put it online, it would ruin the saves of my other, of the other mod campaigns that I'm using right now, like TWR Thousand Week Reich. If I update it right now at the time of me recording this, then that, that save would already be ruined, and I have to restart again for like the fifth time, so I I just can't get the uh, soundtrack yet, so. Uh, Central Committee meeting number 24. The strike of a gra gavel turned the hushed clamor of the packed committee down to silence. The officials gathered in the packed opera house, watching the, with anticipation, as the general secretary took the stage, approaching a sturdy podium and clearing his throat before leaning into the microphone. Following a brief report on the minutes of the previous meeting, as well as a few token proposals on small issues, the group of Russians got down to brass tacks. And with that, I will now open the floor to my comrades in the committee. Does anyone have a motion they would like to raise? Almost immediately after Sablin had finished talking, an older man stood up and shakily produced a coffee-stained sheet of paper. Adjusting his spectacles, he began to read out a simple proposal increasing the power of the Soviets within their own workplaces. The pitch, in its entirety, was effectively to institute the first steps of a workplace democracy. The motion was promptly sound seconded and passed with a comfortable majority, and the meeting continued as normal. The revolution spreads to the workplace. Very good, comrades. Very, very good. Very awesome. Hmm. We have equal rights, huh? Let's see, this is state of 2, state of 1.5 a day, or a month, I mean. You want to be careful of this, just because... Oh, see, there we go. Like, even though it looks like nothing's happening, uh, it can still go down monthly, which is not very cool. So you want to make sure that you keep an eye on this, just because it's, it's like, it looks plain. It can go up and down still, like the academic base here, it's 0.25 a month, while the poverty rate's like going down by 0.25 a month, so that's not really cool either. Oh, we can prepare against someone else. Oh, man, we are bullies. We are straight bullies here. But something tells me we're going to annex them later on anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The wheels begin to turn. Cool, we get more consumer goods factories, production cap, growth, and output. So, can you hear it, comrades? The factories are alive with the sound of machinery and power tools at work. The roads are busy with traffic once more, and the workers are once again trolling or toiling away to create a better future for all of us. Yet again, we have accomplished the impossible, and our efforts have imbued with new life into the region. Soon, the industrial... And potential of the entire region will be fulfilled to its utmost, and we'll have a strong base from which we can continue to spread the revolution across Russia. Most importantly all of, however, the common folk of Biratia have finally been able to live better lives. With plenty of jobs available for all, the people have finally begun or been emancipated from the lingering dread of poverty and hunger. The wheels of labor have begun to turn, and there will be no stopping them any time soon. Very, very good. And we still have minus political power every day. How do I get rid of that? Ah, uh, see, the Bukharnist wing is very low. The Sablonite wing is very high. Currently, we still get minus 0.2 a day. The wheels begin to turn. Stability is low. We need to get higher stability. The ghost of Bukharin. We're on war economy, two-year draft, high income weighted, public education, widespread cronyism, socialist army reforms. Ah, that's what's really killing us for the Forsaken. Ooh. Yeah, so these, um, these effects that we're currently doing, this is killing my political power right now. If we didn't have them, we would actually be getting a little bit of political power, which would have been nice, but whatever. And they're probably going to have to give in. Sorry, guys, but... Oh, never mind. Oh, I mean, yeah. Has Burgundy finally done it? God help us. Oh, no. And we've got to remember, Hadrish was elected as a successor last time, so. Got Why? I mean, if you can kill that division, great. Hold on. Before that time go on, how strong are they? What's their strength level? 11%? 10? 9. 8. Out of 5. 4. Great successful. Reports to return that our men hurry home with trucks filled with loot and blood smeared all over their hands. They congratulate each other for the successful raid against an unsuspecting enemy, patting the comrades on the back and taking the last few shots of the survivors scurrying away. We proclaim victory in the skirmish, as our men cheer and whistle in the hysteria of war, eager to present us the treasures they have prized from the grips of our adversaries. Seize all that we can use and get food for the hungry, huh? I'm sorry, but look, they're so weak. I mean, bullying them is just, just a little too easy. And that's okay. I'm totally okay with that. It's just unfortunate for them. This... Uh, let's get better workers. But, uh, food for the hungry. At long last, everyone finally has food for the night, and we need no longer to work on empty bellies and broken hearts. Living off half of rations for months has taught us all temperance and composure, but not at our minds in the silence and his icy hysteria. Now we have plenty of food for generations to come, and the people of Baratia can to 
begin their toils without hunger bothering them throughout their maddening, tiresome days. Guess we're not going hungry tonight. Great. Great, great, great. It's our heart. I do need to try the NKVD. Justice? Ooh, I'm not sure which one's better. Justice will lose political power to get more weekly war support, or a chance of redemption. It seems like a chance of redemption would be something that Salva Knight Wing might choose, but... Mm, we do lose war support for... But it's not, temp, it's not uh, permanent. Hmm. Let's do Inner Hearts to get more stability first. God, these are good things. There's no other place to start than by improving the lives of our people socially. Our society. Or society is still mired in the tradition of the stars. This is a huge issue for our appearance to the other warlords. And if we want to be a Leninist state, we have to look like one. We must take care of this problem at once. Women deserve rights just like men. Men. Old traditions must be destroyed to pave the way towards progress. We can't let the people be oppressed any longer. Once we achieve the social revolution, there will be no stopping what is right. If you have more rights, then they will work harder. The ancient belief and customs that are not compatible with socialism will be ended. After all, everyone must be equal if we want to accomplish the revolution. I love stability. Please, 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 throw on more stability. Throw on more scavenging for the... We are going to become a very advanced, strong, Leninist nation. Oh, look at that. The Mongolian Civil War. From Taiga to British seas, the Red Army stands above all. Well, that's not the real Red Army. We're the real Red Army, right? We're re we're the real people. Let's make sure we do that. Uh, APCs would be nice as well. More anti-tank would obviously be very nice as well. But we don't have any rubber or enough... Was that aluminum, it looks like? It is what it is. Since we we don't have enough army XP either. Mm, wait. Oh, you guys... Are, uh, that's right, you did the little border war. Uh, U.S. is getting involved in South American politics. <sighs> Aren't you the field marshal? Yeah, you are the field marshal. That's fine if we only have one person here doing this for now. Slutsky? Oh, I guess that's fine. You can keep him right here for now. It's fine with me. That is fine. I do want to make these guys like 40 combat with eventually. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. No. Everyone's going to become this. We're going to need way more guns. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to need a lot more equipment, period. These guys are okay. I don't, I don't want that division. These guys are okay. But they're not really that great in our hearts. The shackles broken. The place of women in the revolution have been a question for many social movements. Are among them. Our female comrades have been just as oppressed by the specter of capitalism as men, if not more so. Why can't they fight on the front lines or work as medics in the field hospitals? We shall promptly decree in order to make women equal to men in army capacity. Female battalions will be a staple of our army. All people are comrades, not just the men, but the women too. Our enemies will fear our female soldiers just as much as any men. Very good. Oh man. I really kicked the bucket with this stuff. We have plenty of motorized though, which is fine enough that I'm going to do a bad thing. There you go. Uh, we at least have one on each. We're going to do this. There we go. Uh, put you up here. And do like that. There we go. That's nice. And make sure we go get back to motorize eventually. That'll be important. There we go. And now at least our soldiers will be... Oh, well, hopefully they'll be pretty strong eventually. They're not very good. 19 soft attack. That is... 20, okay, now they're 24. That division does. This one has actually, is a little stronger, but over time, as these guys get more strength, they'll do fine. They'll do fine. As long as we keep building, 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 of course. They are only 13 combo with, actually, right? Yeah, they got... They're basically... They're basically, like, light infantry, but they're using normal infantry. Or, no, they're using... Oh, these are elite infantry. Oh, I'm using elites. Whoops, I didn't realize that. Oh, well, whatever. Shackles were broken. State reform. Or place the dominoes. Hmm. Gender equality. Gender equality. Okay, so, so as Marx so incisively surmised long ago, human history can be best understood through the lands of the oppressed and the oppressor, and his oppressor, each diametrically opposed in their ceaseless struggle. However, ages was in the oppressor, and those lands not yet claimed by the fascists, he employs an insidious method to mask his intentions. A mask forms upon the contours of his face slowly, he morphs into something new, a rational moderate. Quick to support theoretical causes, he will suffer no discomfort acknowledging a position's moral righteousness. Oh yes, the cause is surely just. His contention, however, appears upon any real implementation. Is it time, he cries, why must you alienate the people with such swift changes? After an enlightened conversation with Comrade Pichuro, Comrade Soblin has seen the truth behind these nefarious lies. The socialist women will be equal to the men in all matters. As an inseparable aspect of the bourgeois culture, the sex-based societal roles must become a thing of the past. Let the moderates shout. Our cause aligns with the highest ideals of Lenin and Marx. We shall not drag our feet as we have all hands on deck. Chin resting on his hand. Salvin listened to his comrades savagely debate the status of women in the revolution. Letting their words wash over him, Salvin recalled that Lenin always said women were crucial to the revolution, something that many chauvinistic communists prefer to ignore. Until recently, he had been given little thought to the issue, preoccupied as he was, but Pichuro said, Olanoshkaya, 
have given them a lot to think about. If they were to create a new Russia where men and women were equal in every way, shouldn't women be able to serve in combat if they so choose? Making a decision, Southern shot to his feet. Comrades, he boomed, cutting through the din. Uh, immediately silence, every face turned to him. Are these attitudes towards women not reactionary? Lenin said women are as important as men in achieving the triumph of the revolution. And it is our duty to ensure that they have the freedom to choose how they may serve the cause. If the women of Russia wish to hold a rifle for the revolution, let them. Taking a seat, Southern sensed the effects of its word had on his audience, like an electric current running through the air. Sitting across from him, Pachuro shot him a grim. In a few moments, the Central Committee voted unanimously to allow women full equality and service to the revolution. Soldiers were sent running through the streets, calling the news to all, and before the days was out, masses of women flooded the opera house demanding to be enlisted. Standing on the stage with his hands on his hips, Southern looked down with his satisfaction into the chaos of the pit. Beside him, Pichiro smiled amiably, draped her arm around his shoulder. Ah, Valera, I knew you'd do the right thing. All women to arms. Just imagine, man. You kill off all the women and the men. Now there's no country left. I love it. Everyone for the revolution. Ah, very good, very good. Manpower looking pretty decent. Uh, man and... Well, it's just manpower, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, actually, we're getting positive amount of political power. Finally, the handsome Southern is getting political power. An ultimatum. We received an ultimatum from Cheeto. They're demanding that we hand over their tribute, our tribute of food, our loot, or else they will raid us and take it away from us. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, actually, actually, they might be able to beat us up. They actually might be able to beat us up. Why did I convert my divisions over? That's that's good. Um, we are at an impasse to decide. Do we decide to engage in confrontation with Cheetah, possibly risking our men dying at the hands of our enemies, or do we instead send down and cave into their demands, giving them the desired loot, allowing our men to live to fight another day? Um, let's get our guys over here first. We're going to defend. They're like, this is why I want to convert my divisions. They're like 10 combat width. Um, they're probably that size. I'm going to go and do this so we can like spread our guns out a little bit better this way. How many days do we have left? Nine days, nine days. That's fine. And we have better, probably pretty good in defense, honestly. 33% stability. Oh, we have one loot. How many days do we have left? Seven days. All right, guys, get entrenched. You know what? I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. We do that. Save your guns for now. Save the guns. Save everything you can. Oh, see, there we go. We need less now. That's awesome. For the love of God, I hope we can hold on. I kind of don't think we'll be able to. We will not back down so easily. Oh, boy. Now, they are attacking over a river, which is good. They are attacking with one division while we are being reinforced with a few others, which is good. Hopefully, we can defend against these evil Russians. Some Russians are evil, I guess. You know, happens. Political power going up. 0.26 a day. Great. Oh, we're winning it. We're winning it. The enemy is defeated, my friends. Recent reports have been have been sent in of an overwhelming victory against a recent party of raiding bandits and a brutal send-off. They were decimated by our valiant defense forces, and now their bodies lie scattered and mutilated by war, with surviving survivors dashing for cover and retreating into the misty frontiers. All soldiers chant songs of victory and heroism heroism in the face of invading evil. The rush of bloody defeat will certainly teach them a lesson about attacking the lands of Biratia for years to come. We get political power, stability, and early infantry rifles. Nice. All right, we keep swapping out our generals. I don't like that. I really don't like that. But it's Hoi 4. What do you expect? Adrift on the tides of memory. And now, prepare for a raid ourselves. Otto Brown scuffled through the streets towards the opera house, breathing stem, steaming before him in the grayness before dawn. Rheumatic old knees aching a harsh Siberian cold. Boots crunching morning frost that covered the cobbles like the pale or the pale on his soul. Braun delved the pelag pelagic depths of his memory. All these years later, his exile from Germany still lodged in his heart like a cruel dagger. The calendar had sliced years from his life, and still the pain did not fade. The dim years after his flight from prison in 1928 had been marked by failure and pain, first by the annihilation of his communist allies in China, and then by the collapse of the Soviet Union into a thousand bickering shards. And it still worsened as he learned, from the slow tide of information that rolled over the shattered Russia, that his once lover Oleg had been murdered in the Nazi death camps. She had been burned so bright and the fascists had snuffed the flame within her like they had done with so many others. He had loved her, loved how she made him feel. He could still feel like the thrill when she helped break him out of prison, and the memories of their evenings together in Moscow, keeping him, which kept him warm on so many cold Siberian nights. All was dust now. Lenin's dream lay crushed, and Olga moldered in a mass grave. Braun felt dis diminished, withered, broken against the wheel of time's relentless advance. He had contemplated ending his torment more than once. Then Salvin and Pachuro had come to him in Irkutsk. Speaking of revolution, 
of making Lenin's dream live again. They were children, vainly idealistic, and yet he couldn't help but become their mentor. What else was left to him? He would happily give his life for some, for even the slightest chance that socialism might rise from the ashes like a phoenix. And yet, no matter how many years passed, Olga's face would be forever burned into the man's, to, into his mind's eye, beaming as she had been during their dash from the prison through the icy fields of distant Saxony. Give me the waters of Leth and that numb the heart, and I still will be unable to forgive you. Oh boy, oh boy, man, oh man. Uh, the revolutionary women. Ooh. War was for stability, Alex stability. So, beyond any policy argument or rep proposed reforms, it is clear that socialism benefits all. With the destruction of bourgeois property relations, the expansion of welfare, and the ordering of society, conditions are rapidly changing. No longer forced to pry in existence from the hands of their masters, the women of the Soviet Union why is that lowercase Soviet Union? Enjoy many benefits. Freed from wage labor, they now have time for jovial pursuits. Adequate attention can be safely given to family, career, duty, and happiness. And in addition, mothers no longer suffer from the indignity of working alongside their child. Public schooling and relaxed quotas have ensured a better upbringing and an end to any lingering child labor. The extent of our policy may vary, but it is undeniable that the socialist women have become emancipated by the revolution. In a mere 21, 21 days, we get better effects. We can really work on our political power. Wow. That is... Sadness. Oh, and someone has been defeated. Good for them. Oh, oh, well, America's doing... America's doing American things. You know, what do you expect? Either they do... Tricky Dick. Tricky Dick is doing something. And who's leading this? Oh, man, you look old, man. You look... Hmm. Man, you must have had a harsh life. I mean, 62. I mean, you're going to look really old. I wonder how the healthcare would be in this nation, you know, in the Reich at this point. But at least it's progress, Sophia, with giddy anticipation of uh, helping... Helping, uh, but helping in the confusion, hunched next to her radio. She sat on her knees as she awaited the announcement from Comrade Sablin. Every slight move met with an ir ir irritating creak from the loose, busted floorboards. The statement was set for about 4 p.m., and Sophia had sat around her home watching her clock like a hawk up until the very last minute. Now she listened as Sablin's words began to take form. Steeped in static and with a wavering volume, the speech felt clearer as day to Sophia. Good afternoon, comrades. Many of my advisors and I have realized that although we've been striving, Striving for equality, both at home and the workplace, there is still a group among us that cannot rightfully be called free or equal. Today, let it be known that the women of Baratia and Russia at large will be considered equal in the eyes of their male comrades. For how long can we call ourselves revolutionaries if we still leave our Russian sisters in the shackles? Well, just don't get your sisters pregnant. Uh, Sophia shot to her feet, the floorboard squealing at the sudden movement as thoughts ran wild through her mind. However, childlike insecment gave way to deep worry as she a new thought passed. How will they enforce this? She already knew the answer, and it was said in her. They couldn't. Pretty words mean nothing to those that wouldn't listen. Uh, some days, she muttered, as she, resigned to her fate, went to hang up her husband's clothes before he returned home. As she left, however, something cut her eye. A hatchet, leaning against the back door. Ever since she was a little girl, she'd wanted to chop the firewood. But it was always her brother's job. They said it wasn't a woman's work, and then it hit her. This announcement wasn't a mandate. It was a blank check for her own personal revolution. So she decided today she would do what she wanted. Sophia hefted up the axe and went to chop wood. Dimitri could do his own laundry. Liberation one swing at a time. I wonder if this is going to come back and, like, we'll get, like, an update on Sophia. Like, what they did for the... When I played as England and I played as a collaborationist government, there was, like, this lesbian couple there. And eventually, one of them died. Eventually, I think... Spoilers. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah. I wonder if they, Sophia will make a comeback in the future. That'd be kind of cool if she does. You like hearing stories about people, right? I mean, I do. That's me. Uh, initiate. Yep. People try to beat us up for loot. And we beat other people up for loot. It is just life in Russia. What do you expect? Should be paid? Great. Thank you very much. We're not going to read this just because we've already read this once. Thank you very much. We're going to build new schools with that loot that we've not stolen, but acquired for the revolution. We shall give it to the children so that they may learn. And it's time to try the NKVD. The time has come, my friends. The top officials of the infamous secret police force that served as a terror of so many for so long will finally be put on trial in the people's court. Justice will be served, but unlike our enemies, we have elected to do so with fairness and honesty. They will be prosecuted like any other and be given the best chance to defend themselves. Although these men would never show us the same mercies given the chance, we must prove to them or to the people that we are not the same monsters that once reigned in Irkutsk. By avoiding a humiliating show trial in a kangaroo court, we will demonstrate that both friend and foe can be given the chance or the benefit of the doubt, and that justice will always prevail in our new Russia. Now, I really don't know which way to go. I really don't know. I want to go justice for the bereaved, but a chance of redemption sound really, sounds really, really good to me. I want to go here, but we get more weekly works for it, which is nice. But a chance of redemption, that just sounds like what we needed to do. The fate of Yagoda, the people's judgment, sick Semper Tyrannus. God, I, I want to do that so badly. I think that would be so much fun, but I don't think we can do that. I don't think I can peacefully do that in my head. Clock severely injured in the Kiev bombing. Troubling news from a troubled land. Well, it is Ukraine. What do you expect? Hey, look. 
Leninist Economy Stage 1. I love it. I hope you love it too. The Revolutionary Women. Nice. Very nice. 0.13 day. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Transistors Computing. Very good. 1962. It's almost 63. Let us go ahead and get some more cap growth and factory output. That'd be good. Batch production methods. That'd be very nice. Because right now we're still trying to build up some more civilian factories here. It's taking a while. It is what it is. We need more guns. Uh, early artillery, a basic anti-tank, we need some more support equipment, and the fate of the NKVD. The remnants of Yagoda's oppressors, who had been unable to flee by westwards, were sent to Vernudinsk in the middle of the night in cattle cars, shuttled along the Trans-Siberian like so many other gulag-bound victims before them. One by one, they were hauled before the courts, found guilty of the crimes against the revolution and the people, and dragged back to the cells. In the galley... Uh, a gallery, the people howled for blood before they were silenced by the tribunal. Watching from the bench, Southern could not help but feel their pain. All have lost someone they loved to the NKVD. As the sun begins its descent, and the last of the trials of individuals concludes, the tribunal faces a second and arguably more important item on the agenda. What to do about the NKVD organization as a whole? Frothing at the mouth, the more radical mutineers argue that NKVD must be totally dissolved, for its history as a tool of state oppression and the Yagodian tyranny. Though agreeing with them on principle, Salvin also finds himself drawn to the arguments of Braun and older Bolsheviks, who insist in quiet but firm voices that NKVD is too valuable a tool to cast aside, that it ought to be reintegrated as a security force of the ASSR on a tight leash. Southern weighed the sins of the NKVD against its potential use to the revolution as the debate rages on. The NKVD has done so much evil, but could it be rehabilitated? Could it even be just what they needed for the re revolution to prevail? Comrade Southland, cried Pichiro, startling him out of his reverie. We have not yet heard from you. What shall be done with Yagoda's dogs? Crimes cannot be forgiven. Oh, shh. Nikes. Shh. Nikes. All right, so let's, we got to talk about this. Justice for the bereaved. We can dissolve them. Or chance at redemption. Uh, mm. I think with NKVD, there's a chance that we could be corrupted to use it for evil. I don't think that we should have it. The, the chance, the temptation to use an organization like this would make us no better than Yagoda. So I'm thinking the crimes cannot be forgiven. I know that doesn't seem like we should do that. They can still, of course, serve the revolution, but I just don't think that their crimes can be forgiven. I just don't think we can do that. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous to be left alive. Now that the trial is concluded, the question remains of what will become of the NKVD itself. During the related council meetings, much of the radicals have loudly argued that the NKVD played an unmistakable role in the oppression of millions during the days of the old Soviet Union, and that the only way to avoid losing sight of our ideals is to do away with the infamous street police once and for all. Being all too familiar with the horror stories associated with the organization, their words resonated well with Selden, who has rightfully decided to completely dismantle the NKVD for good. We will begin to judge each individual the member of the NKVD and determine the severity of their individual crimes. For those who are found to have committed countless crimes against the people, we will lock them up and throw away the key. As to the rest, there is a chance that they can repent for their crimes in the form of community service to allow to the people, and some may yet be allowed to reintegrate. Soon the people will never have to fear the paranoid reprisals of the secret police, and together we will move ever closer to our dreams of a true revolution, which we lose political power, but at least we get more weekly uh, war support, which is very nice. You know, we don't have to worry about that too much. We get one and a half a week, which is really, really good. We're really trying to improve our industry here. Man, I'm really glad I went with that. Italy wins the Italo-Turkish War. Very cool. Peace in the Middle East, huh? We'll see how long that lasts. We'll see how long that lasts. I, I, you know, I'm at the time of this recording, I'm playing the Thousand Week Reich, and just seeing Burgund being this large is, like, a little unsettling. Like, I know they're going to get even larger, but, man, I have to play them someday. Project Gallahorn. Nuclear monthly stockpile chain. Oh, okay. Purge the Rot. Shadow State. Adjusting to the new goals. Okay. Omar, Omar becomes Sultan of Sinon. Bulgaria sides with Germany. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, the Three Realms. Huh. Just new goals. Yeah. Okay, then. Where is... Uh, I mean, it's gross Germanic is right, but where is... SS or... Gross Germanic is right... Uh, what was it? Ordenstadt? Gothenburg. Gothenland? Gothenland. Welsh Unionists win elections. Britain is not a dream. It's so weird to see Wales here. I don't know. It's just John Morris, huh? But happy 1963, comrades. It is a new year. A new us. And the fate of your good up must lie ahead. The tyrant lies defeated. The terror of the night, reduced to a fearful husk cowering in a cell. The revolution has begun anew, finally saved from traitors and vile men. Now the unspoken question lingers in the air. What comes next, comrade Braun? 
often struggling to compose himself, has strongly indicated that he wishes to see the monster executed. In the private talks with Salvin, he passionately argues his case. It would be disrespectful to those murdered to allow such a man to live, an exceedingly dangerous man. According to him, Yagoda must serve as a symbol to all who would dare subvert the will of the masses to fulfill their own petty ends. However, Kermit Pichiro has emerged with a different approach, believing that an execution will forever sully the moral character of the new state. Pichiro argues instead for a lifetime imprisonment. According to her, the new union must rise above the barbarianism of the past. In addition, she believes imprisonment sets no less effective an example. Ultimately, the choice falls on Salvin's shoulders. Each day we remain undecided as another day we anger our people. Something must be done with the old oppressor. Yes, something must be done. And hopefully, we make a good, correct choice. Whatever it may be. Look at that. This is all with NKBD. Not bad. No secret state police here under Sablin. Did he have a middle name? I'm pretty sure he did. The Broken Sword. Days after the trials, the former officers of the NKVD are loaded back into the cattle cars that brought them to Varhundinsk, or just, I'm going to V from here on out. I can't pronounce words correctly sometimes. And sent back down the railroad to the prison farm so that they may atone for the crimes in service to the revolution. A year's hard work is nothing compared to what a less merciful adjudicator may have sentenced them to, and yet they are now scowl at Sablin as they are herded onto the train. Standing on the platform with his hands on his hips, Sablin frowns right back at them. They deserved a hell of a lot worse, but if they were to birth a just and equitable Russia from the ashes of the old, they cannot repeat Yagoda's mistakes. Even if the NKVD could aid in the liberation of Russia, to reintegrate them would be like selling their soul, and they would deny the blooded toll they've taken on the people. So many had lost loved ones to the NKVD. <clears throat> Sablin refused to allow them to spill more innocent blood in his name. As the train drew away from the platform, Sablin turned and walked away without any direction of mind. He felt so certain he was doing the right thing when Pachuro caught him in the courthouse, but in the light of the day he was not so sure. He felt like he'd been handed a sword with which he could liberate Russia, and had probably broken it over his knee. Yet it was also true that the NKVD were forced for corruption. Sovlin couldn't picture himself becoming like Yagoda, but the temptation was there. Did he have the strength to resist it? Well, it was done now, and he had to live with the consequences of his decision. The revolution would be difficult, but at least it would be honest. The hardest thing to do, and the right thing to do, are often the same. Yeah, they definitely are. They definitely, definitely are. <clears throat> Alright. So when can we uh, attack Alden again? Thank you. Um, ah. Oh, we can go to war with these guys. Yeah, they try to fight us. I don't think fighting over river against these guys is probably in our best decision. So let's not do that. That would probably not be very bueno to do. Actually, how are our soldiers? They're pretty inexperienced except for this division. They're regulars, which is nice. But these guys... Oh, see, they already have more soft attack than the light infantry, so this is already better. Already. Organization is 34. While well, these guys, while well, they're doing the militia, like, suppression stuff. That's actually 53. That's not too bad, actually. That's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and grab military factory construction base. That stuff would be good to do. Ah, here we go. The fate of Yagoda. I'm sorry, Alden. It must be done. Oh, we must get an event. Alright, the trial of Genrik Yagoda. Gaze burns within, with vitriol. Yagoda scowled at Salvin from the dock. His face twisted with contempt. Undaunted, Salvin stared right back. They had decided to hold the trial in the Opera House as so, so many people could be packed in as possible. Ron's voice echoed in the cavernous space as he read out the list from the tyrant's crimes. Through it all, Yagoda didn't much as flinch. Genrik Grigoryevich Yagoda. This court of soldiers and workers finds you guilty of all charges laid against you. Now that you are finally responsible, do you feel the slightest regret for the vile crimes you've committed against Russia and her people? Braun looked down at Yagoda, trying his best not to look smug. Yagoda turned his face fractionally to look upon at Braun. When he spoke, it was as though his words were being dredged from the sediment in the depths of Lake Baikal itself. Yes, I am sorry. I am very sorry that I, when I had the chance, I did not shoot you all. Braun smirked, darkened as he took a seat. Let it be known that the accused expresses no remorse. Now, as to the matter of punishment, well, the court decided, or debated, Salvin stared into Yagoda's eyes and tried to make sense of what he saw there. In his time in Yagoda's service, Salvin had never met the man and had formed an image in his mind of a colossal, statuesque figure beyond simple humanity. It was easier to fight the ent entity than the short, haggard man who sat half-sunken in the dock. Why had he become so hollowed with hate? What had led him to bathe his hands in so much blood? Salvin felt a raging urge to see Yagoda extinguish, as much for as the crimes he had committed as for the grim vision of what he could become if he gave into the power's black temptation. And so, when Yagoda's sentence was announced, five years on a prison palm, Salvin's jaw clenched. Insufficient! That man was a tyrant, a murderer, a plunderer, an enemy to everything right and pure. Consumed by a certain wildness, Salvin yearned to leap forward, drag Yagoda out into the mud, and give him the justice he deserved. Give in? Six simple tyrannus? Or hold on. We must hold on. We must. We must have the people's judgment. We cannot forget the blood that has been spilled and the sacrifices made in the name of our revolution. However, 
Vengeance must not overtake sense. By killing this former oppressor, we set a dangerous precedent. Yogoda must serve as an example of the new character of our social state. Instead of committing an extrajudicial murder as the old NKVD would have, we will organize a public trial, ultimately. We must show more strength and restraint than violence. We must. Or this new state will not last very long. And we will end up becoming like Yogoda himself. It is tough trying to do the right thing, as that uh, event said earlier. And we have no planes. Hmm. Can we actually make planes? Early fighters? Yeah, we can. We're not going to go with cast just because uh, the the distance, the range needed is probably a bit much. So we're going to go with that. I'm not going to use strategic bombers either. I don't believe in interceptors for some reason. I don't know. I've never, I haven't really tried them. They seem to okay, but I don't know. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we need to initiate the raid. Go ahead. We're doing this for children. Remember, we're doing, we're raiding for children. They refuse. Great. Volgda. Volgda. Well, we do this in the name of the next generation. We commit atrocities for children. Seize all that we can use. Oh, we get one and the spoils of war. Great. I could have read that, but it's whatever. Uh, wow, we're actually losing some more, huh? People's judgment, open refugee programs, spoils of war. Uh, let's see, we pretty much already read this. Balance of powers clearly shifted in our power. Favor, stability, war support, and get some more guns. Actually, we could really use those guns. We could really, really, really use those guns, man. That's really nice. And once again, this shifts around. It is what it is. The people's judgment, my friends. Beautiful. And united forever. The symphony of equality is slowly building to a crescendo. The once heavy air, weighing down on the common man's broad shoulders, has assumed a light and formed. Long sealed lips begin to sing as free expression returns to life on the shores of, like, Baikal. The people, long cynical in their attitudes, have begun to reveal a revived kinship. Once again, they all have truly become comrades without coercion, brutality, or betrayal. The people find faith in our inevitable goal. While fully healing, our scars may take some time. Our progress towards the liberation of the proletariat and the restoration of legitimacy has begun, in which we get more daily political power and we get the national spirit unity forever, better recovery, and division defense. And then we will finish this focus, the next one, and then we shall call it an episode. I wanted to finish this part of the focus tree up by the end of this video, and it looks like the Siberian Black Army, which I want to play as someday, as well as the People's Revolutionary Council, are having a little bit of a power struggle. Uh, Siberia, Soviet. Legacy of the Siberian plan. Siberian free territory. The People's Justice. Swallowing the bile that throws to his throat, Soblin clenched his fist and clamped his eyes shut. Lest this is the sight of the tyrant, tyrant sent him, capitulating forward to enact vengeance upon him for all the innocents he had killed. Teeth grinding, every muscle in his body tense as Yagoda was led away. All that death, all that spilled blood for five years on a prison farm, so many had lost someone to Yagoda's reign of terror. And this was his punishment? <clears throat> Breathing deeply. Southern barely noticed as the opera house began to, to empty. Uh, the gulf? Cool. Whatever. We don't really care. Finally, he raised his head and slowly opened his eyes, squinting as they readjusted to the light. For the first time, he truly saw the mural that adorned the dome. It was an angel of the October Revolution. Other workers storming the Winter Palace, red flags unfurled and fluttering in the wind. Slowly, Soblin calmed himself, relaxing his shoulders. He reminded himself that this was what he was just fighting for. The right for the people to make their own justice, without a tyrant to force their hand. If he had indulged his intention to deliver the vengeance of murdered thousands upon Yagoda, it would have been an abdication of everything he stood for. Feeling a hand on his shoulder, Soblin turned his head to look into Pichiro's face. She gazed down at him with an expression of infinite compassion. Valero, take heart. We fight for a brighter future, not to take vengeance for the cruelty, cruelty of the past. By showing clemency, we will demonstrate to the Terrans and all the peoples of Russia that we will never repeat his crimes. Mercy, Valera. Mercy is our greatest weapon against the enemies of all that is just. Blinking away tears, Soblin smiled. As he took one last glance at the mural, the two old friends left the opera house, shivering in the chill evening breeze. The best revenge is to be unlike whom, him, who performed the injury. Very, very good. I gotta play this guy someday. The Black Guard units look really cool. interesting. Ah, Madagascar has exploded. Very cool. The Everlasting Legacy of the Reich. Court of the Mad King. God damn. I gotta play this nation someday. That seems like so much fun. Tomsk. Huh? Empire of Japan. Shangxi. Republic of China. Who is the Republic of China led by? Fascists. Okay. Re Communist Revolution in the Levant. A revolution in the Holy Land. Well... Le Levantine People's Republic by a smoking dude. United forever and we shall end this focus with a torch of hope. So, dreams are fickle things. In their time, they wield unrivaled power. Dreams triumph over all reason, manipulating reality itself to suit their whims. Indeed, dreams are of influential actors. However, they find themselves no match for the morning sun, fading like a distant mirage into its yellow horizon. The people of Lake Baikal have awoken, and for the first time in history, the dream has not receded. What started as an impassioned speech in a radio tower has grown into a massive movement, a simple rebellion the sparks needed to revive the social spirit. We have achieved one seemingly impossible task, and with the end of tyranny, we march towards another. Reunification will not be easy, but it will be necessary. 
Let us carry the torch of hope across the east. The dreams of October will not fade this day. And how many how much political power are we getting? Point two a day? Still, could be better. And I could actually honestly use another research slot, but that's okay. That is okay. Sometimes we cannot do stuff. And the new socialist man. The days were long on the prison farm, and life was not very easy, but it was a far cry from the filth and degradation of Yagoda's NKVD gulags. The Sublinet treated him well, better than he expected, better than he thought he deserved for the things he'd done in the service of the Yagoda. In the time, Roman Denishevich Karsoyov even came to enjoy it. It was hard work, but good work. Life slowed and became aware of the passing of the seasons, of the simple beauty of Siberia, of the joy in raising a living from seed to harvest. Twelve months after a sentence was pronounced in a freezing V courthouse, the spell was broken. Kosaryov was a free man. Handed a bag holding a change of clothing and given the directions for one of the Central Committee's men boarding houses, he stepped out into onto the muddy highway, breathing steaming before him, or breath steaming before him. He looked left, he looked right. The sultry afternoon sun beating down on him, he began the long walk into V. Kosaryov arrived as the sun set behind him, casting long indigo shadows down the revolutionary city's cobbled streets. He passed a hastily painted mural of the storming of the Winter Palace. The paint was still wet. The art has question questionable skill, but even a simple man like Kosaryov could appreciate the intense emotion behind every brush stroke. Night fell as Kosaryov arrived at the little recruitment office opposite the Napper House, a Sabinite soldier closing up the shoulders glanced over his shoulder at his approach. Comrade, said Kosaryov, heaving a bag over his shoulder, I want to join the revolution. All men carry the capacity for goodness in their hearts. Oh, we get one manpower. <laughs> we get one man. That's kind of cool. We do end up getting one manpower, which is a great thing. At least he finally saw reason and joined the correct revolution. Oh, the Asuda crisis. Oh, what falls faster, a man or his shares? Oh... I'm sorry I don't have the soundtrack or the official music mod. I'm sorry about that. Just I don't want to ruin my other saves. Because I you get tired of playing the same thing five times in a row and every day you have to make a new campaign. So that sucks. But hey, things are looking up here. Things are definitely looking up even though poverty is actually slowly getting worse. But just barely. Almost. It's not even noticeable. So it's not too bad. And we have ah unity forever. A truly good thing. Finally good. And uh, this is going by 3.75. By five a month, and this is going up by a mere 2.25. Anything else improving? Obviously, poverty is not going up. Well, it's getting worse. Dissolving the NKVD? Well, at least that's gone. We got plenty of uh, war support now. Pretty good. And the revolution waits for no one. Slavin rose with the sun, eventually making his way downstairs into the street. Though most had gone to bed, there were still a few stragglers trying to keep the last night's party going. Stopping at a water pump, Slavin washes the morning foulness out of his mouth and shuffled into the opera house, promising himself he'd never touch vodka again. Well, I don't know about that. The enormous theater was almost empty. Rubbing his eyes, Southern mounted to the stage to greet the central committee. Sitting around their meeting table, his closest comrades were sipping from the glasses of vodka. Markiv waved the bottle in his direction. A bit of the hair of the dog that bit you, comrade Southern. Smiling, Southern poured himself a splash of vodka and downed it in a single gulp. Told you. Ah, now I'm awake. Well, shall we discuss the liberation of the East? Salvin was unable to suppress his laughter as his comrades turned as one to glare at him blearily. He knew he ought to be as hungover as them, but he was so flushed with energy after last night when the results of the referendum to reclaim Siberia for the revolution had come in. Unsurprisingly, the people voted overwhelmingly in favor of liberating all peoples of Russia as the oppressed peasants of Irkutsk. Face down on the table, Bichiro groaned and slowly raised her head. A map of the far east stuck to her cheeks. But there, I can't just wait until tomorrow morning? I'm not much good to the revolution with my head hammered like this. Grinning imp impishly, Seven refilled everyone's glasses of vodka. Comrades, the revolution waits for no one. Now, Comrade Braun, regarding the eastern fascists, man was born for love and revolution, my friends. And we shall finish with spreading the revolution. I know this is a long video. When you play TNO, it's going to, they're going to be long videos. Usually. Comrades, the time for liberation is nearly at hand. Now that we have settled accounts with Yagoda and consolidated our position, we must now focus on our gaze beyond our borders. To the east, the situation has grown out of control. White Tsarist officers continue to champion the hopeless cause of monarchism with their pet Tsar and Chita, while the warlords of Amur and Magadan brazenly declare open allegiance to fascist ideals. The ultimate foes of socialism lie right up on our doorstep, and thus we must prepare for the inevitable conflict that will decide once and for all who controls the Russian Far East. While we prepare ourselves for war, it may be necessary to look for nearby warlords who can make common cause with, for we need all the help we can get ridding this region of the fascist scum once and for all. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow when we will push further east and secure as much of Siberia as we can. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great rest of your day.